Indeed, we are here. Welcome to Hammondyville. Thank you for visiting. Um, I am Clint. With me, I'm of course, Don. is Don. Always. And uh, we got another interview lined up today. Uh, today, we uh, we have Sorry, brought in someone very special. Um, Mr. Ken Segos is here today. And um, this is a wonderful day. I am so happy to have you here, sir. And uh, um, how's it going right now? I'm happy to be here, too. You know, I, you know so it is... It's, it's, it's Friends Day. It's Ken and Fan Friend Day. That's what you Ken and Friend Day. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fan well, we, Friend Day. Fan Friend Day. Well, we definitely are fans, and, and I'm 100%. very happy to hear you call us friends. Yes. So <laughs> I um um so most of the people listening to us, since this is a horror podcast, will know you uh from the um Nightmare on Elm Street movies, uh number three and number four, uh as the character Kincaid. Um, I'm not going to start this out by by uh, self-serving and talking about that right off the bat, you know, but I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't go into it eventually, and we will, but um, I wanted to start out by making an observation, and, uh, and, and I wanted to shine a spotlight on, uh, on some pretty incredible things that you, you've got going on, and um, the observation I wanted to make is when I was leading up to this, uh, doing some research and looking at, uh, at what you do, I, uh, I'm pretty sure you're a wonderful human being. I mean, <laughs> that's a freaking fact. <laughs> it, uh, the deeper I dug, the, the, the more dumbfounded I was that, that I wasn't aware of it before. And, and on top of that, um, just, uh, I'm super, super impressed at, at the, um, the, the, the feeling and, and, um, uh, I just want to say the the heart that you put into to what you've got going on, and of course I'm speaking specifically of your your charity work. Um, 1997, you started the Giving Back uh, Corporation, Corporation. Yeah. and um, that is dedicated, of course, to uh, giving back to communities that that could use it and giving a helping hand to people who are trying to help themselves um, in a monumental uh, effort to pay it forward that you were blessed in your life and you decided to to help others you know uh, achieve blessings of their own and uh and i think it's wonderful that you do that um i'll, I'll let you talk about it a little bit more um but i think it's wonderful that you you help to give money to get uh college books uh for people who want to better themselves and get a higher education that you send uh kids to camp to give them uh, something, something else to do to get away from inner city life and and things like that, and um, and I, I really wanted to shine a spotlight on that and give you plenty of time to talk about it. And um, so, how did that come to be, and what do you want to say about it? Well, first of all, thank you for letting me be here. And giving back, believe it or not, is always in the moment. Just as I sit here now you guys are giving back by giving me the chance to express my heart and what I believe in. So I don't care what you do, giving back is gonna always be there. And I, I grew up not having, we was a poor family. We didn't even have a one O and four. So, uh, and I promise God that because of the people that helped me along the way, that I was not going to forget that when I got to a certain age or a certain amount of success, that I was going to always deal back. And so I, when I got to college, we used, but before I went to college, let me go back and just a little bit. Before I went to college, I was a kid on the street, messing around, teasing people people and joking with people and it was this elderly lady that had a fruit job and she was going from house to house knocking on doors begging for money and me and a couple of my friends used to tease her call her names and when we would go to school she was out there begging and we would come home two or three blocks away she would still be begging so we always make jokes about her. But you see, the, the joke was on us. 
when I finished high school and the day before I was to go off to college, this lady knocked on my door. So she wasn't big in money because she needed something. She was big in money because she wanted to make sure the young people in her community that was going off to college had enough money to buy their books. Oh. I never forgot that. I wasn't able to thank her because she passed before I could come home for the Christmas holidays. So because of that, I always make sure that the, I send somebody's kid money to buy their books college when they go to school. So each year, I give at least 10 scholarships, not just in California, but all over. And they have to send in the application, write about what giving back is about. Right. And then during the summer, I used to watch the bus drive away with kids going to camp. And I could not afford to go. I just could see the bus go. So I try to make sure I buy a kid opportunity to go to camp every summer. And, you know, for Thanksgiving, I try to give out a dinner. I, I, those are things that I like doing. It's just, it's not what I feel. I enjoy doing it. I enjoy acting, I enjoy writing, and I enjoy giving back. And I don't want to be one of those entertainers to say, when I make it, this is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know if God going to let me wake up tomorrow. Right. So let me do what I can today. So when I do hopefully make that transition, I can say, see, I was trying. <laughs> <laughs> that will be 60 years from now. You have nothing to worry about. Yeah, yeah so, we need you here. <laughs> yeah, we need you here. Um, so, and, I, and I believe by giving back to young people, and let me say this before we go on with the, with the horror community, mm -hmm. um, with the short film that I'm doing, mm -hmm. this is probably a first because I had so many horror fans who are still pitching in to help me complete my short film. Mm -hmm. That in the credits, I say associate producer is the horror community. Yeah, that is wonderful. Yeah, you, you, I can tell you, um, you're an amazing person without a shadow of a doubt. Um, it's, it's rare that you get, and maybe, maybe not as rare. I don't want to, and I don't want to speculate because, you know, it's, it's, it's us three here, yeah. you know, but I can tell you, you know, you looking at what you've done and what, what you've been part of, it just seems to me that that's rare, you know, that, someone would be willing to just reach out and do the things that you've done. And I wish it wasn't as rare because it, it just really, it, it's, it's just one of those things that needs to happen. I mean, in the world we live in to give, especially a, a child of all things, you know, a chance to enjoy life and a chance to enjoy something. That's, that's a big deal. Sorry, but that's, that's a big deal because the main reason why, that's the future. That's somebody that's going to be around longer than us three because of what, you know, what they've, what they've done. And, and the fact that you can, you can provide for that. I mean, it's, yeah. it, it's, I, it, uh, there's no words for it. I mean, really there are no words for it. And I don't, I and, think you're talking about the ripple effect. Yeah. It, it's know, a domino. The effect. impact will be felt, you know, for generations, a very long time. generations, generations. Yeah. Um, and I know we wasn't going to talk about this. I just reached over because, uh, what's today's date? This is just in March, the 21st, I received this letter mm -hmm. from a young man who was thanking me for helping to buy his books. He said, I am a current, I'm a student at Cerritos College, and I am a major in music. And... I want to say thank you to you and the Giving Back Corporation. Because of your generosity and contribution, I was able to buy my books this year. And it goes on. And to receive letters like that, you know, it is it's very touching. It is. And it's about giving back. 
And Sorry, so, man, I'm, I'm, I'm getting emotional. Sorry. You can cut that out of the video, but I mean, it's, um, <laughs> no, it's, um, it, it's also, it, imp it's also important for all of the fans to know, for you to know, for you that you say what I do, but it's not what I do. It's what we do. You just yes. allow me to be the error right. of the error. The hour ahead of the hour mm -hmm. to do it. So if when I was reading this letter, this was not just to me. It was because you all have supported me. This is to you too. So wonderful. Uh, all right. I, I want to spend a <laughs> I want to spend a little little bit more time on it. Uh, just because um, there's there's another aspect of of what you uh, what you do that is that is interconnected with this, and. Um, and that is uh, partially how how you raise raise funds uh, for these these projects. And now I, reading through your bio that I found, you're a rather prolific writer, um, as well as a, an actor, um, award winning um, you, writer. Yes, yes, award winning writer. Uh, parent, uh, you've written fourteen plays, over thirty five screenplays. You're you're a novelist. Um, it, it, the list is very long. Um, you know, not to mention, you know, um, um, Cable Ace Award and the Humanitas Prize finalist, which I, I think is incredible. Incredible. Um, <laughs> Bold words. You, yeah, incredible. You've, you've had a, a wonderful career without acting. Um, and I was checking out some of uh, your um, novels that are listed on your website for sale, uh, which I assume is uh, something that you can buy in order to make a donation to to your campaign to help people. Yes. Um, and, uh, and at the very least, I, I plan to do that myself. Um, I found myself uh, pretty interested um, in several of those stories. And I find it cool that, that you kind of based them around um, the area where you were born and where your, your upbringing had, had occurred. And, yes. and I... I find it amazing that that continues to be an inspiration. Georgia, for you. sweet Georgia. Yeah, <laughs> Georgia. Yes. Georgia. <laughs> so I was I was looking at uh, things that you had going on with the uh, the McHenry trial, um, which of course is a book that that you wrote and uh, you had adapted into uh, screenplay, and that you were trying to get funds together to make a short film. And I do believe you made the short film. Am I correct in saying that? It's called the secret weapon. It's called yesterday is today and it's okay. about these children in 1963 mm -hmm. who really gave the power back to the civil rights movement mm -hmm. most people don't know that it was children that gave the momentum back that helped dr king they helped all the leaders back with the civil rights movement and this is not a horror film but what happened to these children was horrific was horror. yes yes so Technically, it got horror in it. And these children went head to head with the most vicious races of the time, which was Eugene Boa Connor. Look him up. I already did. Brother, I already got it. I, when, you, when you sent me it, I did all my research and everything, yeah. posted what I posted on, on Facebook. Um, yeah, it was absolutely despicable. Yeah, so, but yeah. these children, did not give up. They went head to head. So I would like to say these children was dream warriors and Bull Connor was Freddy Krueger. <laughs> so yeah, no, that's an understatement. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So and that's something that you're adapting now. You said that uh, that you're working with children and I have um, shot film short. I'm through with principal photography, but now I'm trying to raise money at least eight grand to do the uh, post-production, which means the special effect, which means the looping and all of that. And I have to add more children into the film. And that's because when we shot it, because of COVID, I could only have X amount of people there. And because of there was children, uh, I think we were talking about this earlier, they could only work for X amount of hours, sometimes like three or four hours. Yeah. Sometimes it takes three or four hours to set up lighting for them. Yeah. And they get so, 30 minutes of acting. Yeah. And so um, 
it's a lot that I have to do. I have to do the looping. I have to do the marketing. I have to do all those things to pull the film together. If you go to my GoFundMe site, I show you this film and you can see what I'm talking about. Like if you look at the sale in there, that's not a real sale. I literally built that sale myself, you know, oh. but I have to go in and match it with a real sale. And that costs money. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because I want to be able to submit this to the film, all the top film festivals like the Sundance and you know the Academy Awards. And you know, because this is not only is this a important film. Is one of the few films, if you think about it, where they have shown children, children in the civil rights movement. We know about Dr. King. We know about Rosa Parks. We know about all these people, yep. but we don't know about the investment of children. And also, you know, it wasn't just Black kids. There was white kids that also stepped up to the plate. That's what I loved about it too, was that it was like, it was like when I was looking it up, you know, the whole segregation, you know, that's what it was. I mean, that, that was the big, you know, the big thing about it. But, but, but like you said, white, white people still got involved in it and yes. they still knew that it was wrong and they knew that everybody needed to be brought in. And that's what was, that's why I want this to succeed because, you know, again, like I said earlier, you know, there's, there, th this does not get taught in school anymore. This is something that honestly, it just gets, it's, it, it's just missed and it shouldn't be missed. This was a, this was a, 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 you know, a really monumental event with the whole civil rights movement that people forget about. And, you know, it needs to be out there because it's, you know, it, it just needs to be, especially in this day and age, you know, with, with, how there's so much hate and everything, you know, let's, let, let's take it back guys. Let's, let's, let's take it back to 1963 when, you know what, it was a lot worse than it is now, but we, we were trying. And that's the thing is like, why aren't we still doing that? Why, why is this, you know, it's, just, and it's just, it's infuriating because I just, I just wish everybody could think the same way that you think. If it was 1963, you and I couldn't be talking. Like that's this. very true, which is that, a shame. That's the same, but which is a damn you, shame because we're having a good time. Yeah, <laughs> and I called it uh, the secret weapon yesterday. You know, it's like, yesterday is the day. The reason I say yesterday is the day is because what was going on yesterday is still happening today. That's You're right that's there. Why. Yeah, yeah. It's it's um. It's a shame, you know, again, we're in 2022 and we're still, mm -hmm. sorry, we're still doing the same shit that we were doing yeah. back in 1963. Come on guys. I, um, yeah, uh, that is a very compelling idea and I'm, and I'm very glad that you're doing this work. We need more people doing this work. Um, absolutely because it's, you know, it's become very politicized and, and people think that, that it's over because we've made changes to the laws, but it's not over. No. And uh, and we've got a lot more work to do. And and I'm very happy to know that that you're a part of that. And and even if there's some small way we can be a part of it, we will certainly. Yeah. I know. I don't know if you're going to put my GoFundMe up or not. I already I did, brother. You. We got you. I got but, you, man. I, we'll I'm share just that saying, around. And a lot of times people think that just I don't care if it's a dollar, or two dollars. Like mm -hmm. I. You know, just if you can send something to your 10 of your friends to send send something, even if it's a dollar or five dollars, mm -hmm. don't eat that fries. And send what it costs to get those fries. Put down that goddamn Taco Bell. Yeah, we can do that. We, we, we can we we can do this here. And that's one of the reasons that I let it go, is that I say associate producer, the horror community. I, you know. Because I will tell you what, being, where, being what we're doing, we will we will post it on our page. We'll post it on. I already posted it on my feed. Um, we have a lot of people that care about these kind of projects that. Um, and we'll do it know. again when the episode comes out. Yeah, that's that's our thing. Like we we just want to make sure we keep rolling with it. 
Um, it's something that needs to be, ha- it's just something that needs to happen. It's, you know, you kind of said like, it's not horror, but the events that took place, they're pretty horrific. So, you know what? Kind of, kind of is in that, uh, genre of horror, but, um, yeah, we'll, we'll support you in any way, shape or form we can. I gave you 75 earlier. Um, probably gonna be more, um, Clint, I know we'll, we'll support you. We'll support you best, best we can. Will. Man. Um, Were you all okay that? That. That? Where you Where you all? I'm oh. in Virginia. He's in Pennsylvania. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was trying to go fishing. <laughs> hey, again, I I have FaceTime. I can tell my wife I'm she's not going to complain. I'm going fishing <laughs> with Roland Kincaid. If you want to, if you want to argue with him, go for it. I, I mean, he's the one argument, so um, I'll go fishing. But um, yeah, guys, um, thank this you. Man, this man, this man is this man, this man is amazing. And we wanted to make sure that he got everything out there. Um, again, we don't know how much time we have with him, but we wanted to make sure he got what he needed to get out there. Because again, this man, there's a lot of people, you know, that, you know, we've, we've interviewed, you know, we interviewed Patricia Tallman and Catherine Mary Stewart, who has been in the horror sci-fi and, and Mr. Ken here, he's done more than that. And not to say that, that these other people haven't, but He's done a lot more than just, you know, the horror, um, you know, the whole George Washington's boy. That's a big, that's a big deal. The whole, you know, you know, and yeah. N- NAACP nomination, that's a big deal. Um, so it's the horror, the horror part of it, it'll come. It's going to come in about mm, 15 seconds. <laughs> um, so let's shift gears. Yes, Mr. Segos. Um, we absolutely love you. Uh, we don't want to get explicit, but I fucking love you as a uh, Roland <laughs> Kincaid. Um, absolutely. My favorite nightmare on Elm street other than the first one. Um, and you were a big part of it. And what really sucks is I have this poster behind yes. me. Yes. Yes. I have my Freddy figure and my Blu-ray set. And what really sucks about this poster is you're not on the credits. And I, I don't like new, that. I was new then. I was up and coming then, you know. So I guess one thing that that we can we could bring up. Um, so you know, you doing everything before this. Um, did you uh, did you have to audition for this? Obviously, you probably did. Um, but you probably yeah. won it pretty single handedly, I would imagine. Oh, you don't know the story. <laughs> oh, no. Record, 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 record. Now we're recording. You know the story. Yeah. I didn't want to go out on this audition. Um, when, you know, back then, and they still do it now, but back then, uh, this was before Zoom, the casting directors were sent out to the agent what they called the breakdown. And the breakdown would say the type of actors that they need and what they was looking for. And my agent called me and said, tomorrow you have an audition from Nightmare on Elm Street. And I never knew what, I had never seen Nightmare on Elm Street. Didn't care about Nightmare on Elm Street. All I knew is that the next day I had to go to court. (laughs) And it was raining and I did not have a car. And so he read the breakdown to me and it was this real slim bodybuilding guy. That was night and day for my ass. I didn't look like that. So I didn't want to go up. Why am I wasting my time? So he said, just go anyway because I want you to meet this casting director. So I, he, got, right. he convinced me to go. So the next day, you know, I had been in LA, I think about three years then. No, a few years then, but I don't know how long, but it was that day that it was raining like crazy. I mean, it was pouring down rain. I didn't even have an umbrella, but it was raining. And I had to catch this bus to go downtown, two buses to go downtown or something. I had to catch another two or three buses to go to this audition. Well, I lost the court case, so I really had an attitude. 
Oh yeah, you were pissed at oh, that my point. God. Oh man, this, I know how this audition went. I, I, you know, I, you know, I lost the court case. So my idea was, I had checked the uh, schedule. I could go over to this audition. The audition was like at four fifteen. I can get over there at catch this bus, get over there, you know, around four o'clock, do the audition, and get on that that four forty bus and go back home. You know, because that was another three buses. I get there in the rain, I'm sweating, and they got the hour behind. Oh. And it saw all these guys looking good and everything. And I did not want to be here. I had an attitude back in Monday, Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so we go into the audition. And I had such an attitude. And they kept, the director, Chuck Russell, kept looking at the casting director. And I didn't really, I really didn't care. I really didn't care. And mm -hmm. so please, he, please don't hold back right now. We we have E for explicit, so please don't. I hold didn't back. give a fuck. <laughs> that probably hey, helped you. Thank you so much. You know, I, I didn't give. I didn't give a fuck. And you know, and I looked at it and I said, a black guy wouldn't say this shit. You know, to put your head down there. And then he said, well, say it how a black guy would say it, and do what you would say. So I cussed the direct out per se. And who gives a shit? I mean, I, I'm, I'm really go. Mm -hmm. Messed them out, messed up shit in there. And I left. You know, when I left, they were, he was like looking at me like, I don't know if he thought I was from Compton or what. <laughs> you fucking seem like it, I'm sure. <laughs> I got home. The phone was ringing. You know, that's back there on these, these big. Uh, answer machine that you know that looked like a suitcase. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and it was four. So I finally asked the phone and my agent said, Ken, what the hell did you do? And I said, David, I told you I didn't want to go. And he said, they love you. You booked it. <laughs> and that was it. They thought I was acting. Oh, wow. <laughs> God, she, and That's, I have to say this. I have to say this here. It doesn't work on all the auditions because it didn't work for the next one. <laughs> no. That's why. Is that why they killed you off so fucking fast? No, I always say they killed me because they forgot that they let me live. They said, oh my God, the black guy lived. And so. <laughs> okay, well, first, for what's, what's really bad. So, what's really sad about this whole thing is so in, in horror movie lore and you probably know this yes but you survived you know elm street three and four making you the first african-american actor to survive a major horror film and return for a sequel yes let, let me correct something though i'm the first black to survive a major international horror film because he, right. he is back right back in the 70s there was a movie, black exploitation movie called Black Year, and the great William yes. Marshall. William, yep. Yeah, and so I have to give homage to him. And you know what's really like, crazy too is I don't even know if this came out before, but even you can even go like Ken Forey with Dawn of the Dead. You know, he survived. Um, they, but, they are, they, they're saying now that Ariel Cool J was, and that's not true. That's not true. I, I am the first. Yes, you are the first, hundred percent. And that's, man, that's fucking awesome. Like I, again, I um, I'll be honest with you, and I'll, I'll just tell you straight up, like, Dream Warriors is the best sequel to Nightmare on Elm Street. And again, we got fucking however many, you know, seven, eight, um, <laughs> three's the best without a shadow of a doubt. And it was, is because of you know the, honestly, it wasn't even because of like, it was probably you know. Heather Langenkamp, obviously, Lawrence Fishburne, who nobody knew about. I, I did because I watched Pee Wee's Playhouse. Cowboy Curtis, thank you. Um, but, um, yeah, and then you, it was like, I, I'm seeing all these other credits, but it's like, did, did you guys, like, fucking watch him? Like, he's amazing. He's like, don't you fucking touch me. And I'm like, as you're going out the room, I'm like, that's the temper tantrum I have, like, every day. Like, don't you fucking touch me. Don't do it. Because of you, it's like, I mean, it's, it's, 
man, it's so influential. It's yeah. just uh, and it's you, and the bad thing is like you're still lovable either way. Like it's like yeah. I still love Kincaid even though he's like the biggest prick that's in there. He's like, well, fuck you. I don't care what happens to you. But you knew at the end of the day that that's what you got to do. You got to look out for you because, man. But I, at the I think, I think the um, the reason Nightmare Part Three was so popular because it had a lot of elements in it. It dealt with the homelessness. It, it dealt with the drugs. It dealt with unity. It dealt with dreams. It dealt with nightmares. It dealt with everything. Everything. And um, what Chuck Russell did, the director did, which I think was really so great. He um, he got all his kids together, um, like two or three, at least twice, I believe, before we shot the movie. We had little parties. We had little gathering. We got together and we got to know each other. Sure. And so the next time we got together, one of the first scenes that we shot, it wasn't the first, but one of the first scenes that we shot was in that scene uh, where I go crazy, ain't nobody going to put me to sleep. I, fu- that, I, God, I love that fucking thought. Th- anybody can put me to sleep. God, I love yeah. that. And fuck, I, I really that do. Was, I think that was because we all literally had gotten to know each other and we had an investment with each other. We each knew each other, and that worked. Now, the oh. very first thing we shot, actually, for me, for me, was me and Lawrence Fishburne. The very first words I said, "Yeah," so I don't have to see your ugly face all the time. God, that's a Those great words. line. <laughs> Dude, so so let me ask you this, because I know you know I'm we're. Me and Clint try to figure out questions that haven't been asked in all these other interviews. So we're trying here. Um, did you know that Lawrence Fishburne would wind up where he is today with that, you know, with, with everything he's done? I don't know what he did before Nightmare 3. I know that's when I saw him. Um, but, you know, where he's at now, you know, with Morpheus and just the roles he's had. You know, I do, I, 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 I do know that. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne, he was more of a seasoned actor than I was. Than I was, I think he had been in Apocalypse now. Something. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and he's from Georgia. Not throwing some shots. He's from Georgia. So, um, Georgia boys, man, you, you Georgia boys kick ass. Hey, hey. And I didn't know him, but the one thing that Lawrence Fishburne did for me, he pulled me to the side and helped me do physical acting because I was literally tired, tired. I don't have to sleep. So he told me there's a way to show that without working so hard because he literally couldn't hold me when I was first doing it. And <laughs> so I would, and he always took time to talk to me and to tell me what was going on, what I needed to do because, uh, and I, and I loved that about him because he was, the big brother, because that was the first day. It was a connection. Uh, and I haven't been able to, we haven't sat down and talked since then, but I wanted him to know just how important he was to me being on that set because I was scared. Yeah, I had just left a movie of the week with Denzel Washington called The George McKenna Story. And um, that was a different type of movie than this one was. Oh, one, that's that's a 180. Yeah. So then when we, and something else that Chuck did, the first time that I actually saw Heather Landon Camp was when she came in that room that day when we was doing that scene. So those looks was real. Yeah. That was what was really- They kept it a secret. Yeah. I that's what you. was crazy about that movie is that and I think that's a, another applaud for that movie is that it, it just all felt real. It just all felt connected. It all felt like it was like, you guys have clearly done something before all this. And and like you said, you know, being on the set, um, you know, you guys got together and it, it's, I think that's where the, the whole magnitude of that movie came from was the fact that it was, you know, it just felt like, 
you guys had something together and and that's and again uh, i mean you can look any poll up i mean nightmare of three uh, it's pretty much number one other number one or number two on the polls just because of the way that you guys just gelled it was incredible now number three and number four made the most money they did 100 percent. not bragging but i was in those two brag brag (laughs) brag because again, it was, it was the thing about Nightmare on Elm Street is that again, it 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 um especially with three and four, once you got past that, you fell it, it that series fell into the trap that all other horror movies fall into. Can you keep it going? Yeah. And and you know, the fact I love the fact that King Cade was in four. Uh was it um Joey was in four? The continue and and Clint knows this because he's he's talked to me multiple times about it. A continuation in a horror movie is so rare that when it happens, I don't really even think it matters who's in it, who's doing what. It's like those are characters from a, a previous horror movie, but the fact that it was a a nightmare movie made it even more special because you know it was you, it was Joey, and it was like you know you brought people back from from three. But at the same time, it still fell on the same trap. Like, can you keep it going? And four, as good as it was, five just could not keep that going. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I believe if I had written the script and fought four, I would have been in there a little longer. If you but... wrote the script for any <laughs> of them, you'd have been in there fucking longer. You should have been the whole yeah. series. I think that this, like I say, I I heard rumors. I don't know how true it was because no one in the producer area has confirmed this with me. I had heard rumors that they did want Ken Cade to come back and fight for me. And that was one of the reasons that my line was, I see you in hell, that I was supposed to come back and fight him but I don't know if that happened or not. I also know that there was like, there was another part six and it was supposed to be the dream warriors came back as the dream patrol, but that did not. Holy shit. That would have been a fucking, oh my, that would have been a shit ton better than what we got. <laughs> so, but I, I do know that was a script because I read, I read that script. But um, what a shame. Just what a shame. It, it's just, and again, I know, you know, you moved on to other things and, and, and that's the, that, you know, that's, what's really awesome about you is that um, we can sit here and talk about nightmare on Elm street all night long, but you know what? I'm not going to do it because I know other things you've been in. Um, I, I love talking about nightmare. I, I, I know you do. I know you do. But we're trying to we're trying to mix this up a little bit. We're trying yeah. to, to get this well, to could, stir it up a little bit. Could I ask for one more? Oh no. Go ahead. I hate to go backwards, go but I I heard a story, um, and I didn't know if you'd be willing to recount it for us that you struggled with whether or not to take the part in Nightmare on Elm Street Part Three, and someone who was very close to in your life gave you some advice that convinced you to take it. And I didn't know if, if you'd be willing to talk about that for a minute. Yeah, I, you know, when I got off the road of Nightmare on the Elm Street, I come from a family that come from, I ain't gonna say a religious family, but a spiritual family. And it was a lot of cursing in there. And Sorry. I was asked not to do it. I called the pastor of my mom's church and the pastor was totally against me doing that movie. He said it was the devil's work. He was all this here. And then I called an elderly lady who had always been to church. Uh, she was one of these elderly ladies that had a, when she went to church, she had this coconut shaped white Hat that she yep. sat down, the mother in the church that had sat in this that particular spot since she probably she was a young lady herself, wore the white gloves. And every time I talked to her, 
she would always have her Bible in her lap or reading her Bible. So I called her and I told my mom I was going to call her. I called her and I told her about the movie. And I said, you know, everybody is telling me I shouldn't do the movie. Now, mind you, she was the one that said, you go to Hollywood and you do what you God gave you the gift to do. And so I went and I called her and she was asking, how you doing? She said, I'm doing okay, just reading my Bible, just reading the Lord's work. And I said, I want to talk to you about something. And she said, okay. I said, well, you know, I got off this movie, but they don't want me to do it. And she said, well, why, baby, why? And I said, because the Reverend and all of them said, cussing a lot in the movie. She said, oh, let, let, let me put my Bible down, okay? Let me set my Bible over here. She said, now, she said, now, baby, does it pay? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, fuck them. <laughs> Fucking love it. God. And Thank you so much. Yes. I said, you know, fuck them. I was, I, hoping, said, I was hoping one of us was going to bring it up, but I wanted Clint to do it. <laughs> yeah, so that's how I decided to do the movie. And and, and I'm so glad. <laughs> the following year, the following year, when I went home, they they was uh the roof of the church needed a new roof. And I was going to give a little money. And she stopped me and she said, don't you give them one red penny for that roof. Damn. You tell them it's the devil's money. <laughs> Damn. Oh, man. They didn't want she, you to she do knew. that movie. She knew you were special. Yeah, she told them, don't give them one red dirty penny. Red dirty penny. So well, let's go past um, Nightmare. So um, let's go to Rosewood. Want to talk about some Rosewood? Oh, yeah, Rosewood. Let's talk about some Rosewood there, Big Baby. <laughs> you know what? With Big Baby, I was playing um, late 20s, mid 20 year old guy who had the IQ of a seven year old, five year old, something. And, you know, and I, I love that role. And it's this one scene where Big Baby would say, Big Baby wants some yams. <laughs> you know, to this day, not as often, to this day, when I go to a restaurant and somebody in there that knew me from Rosewood, they would send me over a plate of yams. Oh, Lord. Ugh. Oh, don't say that. I love it. Oh, I would too. 100%. <laughs> I just thought you would probably get up and be like, Big Baby wants some yams. And somebody bring bring them over. They didn't, you didn't even got to do that. Yeah. Yams. And that was with the great, late John Singer. Yes. And I uh, love that movie. And that was another historic. Yes, 100%. That, yes, based on true events. I got, yes. Got a chance to work with the great um, Esther Rowe. And yeah. then there was Paul Benjamin's in there. And, you know, and, um, you know, um, John Voigt. Yeah. Who was a very nice man. So many, so many just big actors that same thing. It's like, they just, they're like how you are. They just, they don't, they just do it to do it. Like they do it because they want to play the part and want to tell the story. And that's yes. what's so great about, you know, Rosewood. They just, just told the story and it was phenomenal. And I didn't know about Rosewood. I did not know about Rosewood until I went into the audition. I actually, I also was up for Boys in the Hood. I did read that. Yeah, yes. Boys in the Hood. I, I didn't get it. Uh, I was Cube. kind of pissed off when I saw that. I was like, um, you I, I don't, I don't, I don't think I could have done what Ice Cube did. I, but you could have did something. Just put him in there for something, because, <laughs> damn it. You know, I, I, you know, I, 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 there's some roles when you, I guess when you see an actor. Or do a role. I don't think I could have done that, and I, you know, I, I, I wish I could have been in it though. I It'd do. been cool. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But you know what's another project, another role you had that was cool, that was awesome, was Daryl. <laughs> Me and Martin Lawrence. 
you know, at the time that we were doing what's happening now, um, Martin Lawrence was living with me. So we was like roommates. And so in real life, because that was Martin Lawrence's first um, job. And, you know, Martin would just had star written on. Was that, was that before his TV show? Yes, that was way before. His TV I was just saying it was way before, right? Way before it. Martin had just won Star Search. Yep. And they had brought him out here for what's happening now. And they was looking for one guy. And so Martin, so they, I just happened to have gone in when Martin was there. And I guess I went in after Martin or Martin went in after me or something. And they said, oh, I guess they thought those two guys had a good chemistry. And I, I believe now they was trying to recreate another generation of what's happening, you sure. know, what's happening now. Mm -hmm. And because I had resentment of being called uh, um, rerun, I did not like that. I wanted yeah. to be my own person. That's why, if you notice, I wanted the things that I requested is I didn't want to wear suspenders. No, I did. I went away. Yeah, that's, and that's, and that's, that's good because I mean, it's just, again, it's a stereotype. Like, why do I want to, why do I want to do that? Like, we know what rerun is, but that's not you. And that's, yeah. you know, what but you've done. I mean, that's not, not even close. I have to say that it was Nightmare on Elm Street that pushed that, uh, the decision over to, to hire me because we auditioned for Nightmare on Elm, uh, for what's happening now. The very week that Nightmare on Elm Street came out, it Holy came out that it came out that Friday, and my audition was that Monday, and wow. it was number one. And I got a call back the third week. Nightmare on Elm Street was still number one. Number one, yep. That's all, man. Again, but th that's that's a huge testament to the chemistry that was there. I mean. Again, you have to, and, and, and again, you know, we're, we're a horror podcast, but at the same time, you're a fucking legend. So we're not just going to talk about nah, Nightmare nah. on Elm Street, but Nightmare on Elm Street 3 was, I mean, it was very different for its time. And um, what, what really sucks about it all is uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, which we're, we're trying to talk to Mark Patton about it when we go to uh, Scarefest. But, you know, that's what really sucks about the whole, like, genre. When is Scarefest? That, that is uh, Carolina Scarefest. That's in May. Oh, I think it's called Fear Fest. Carolina Fear Fest. Fear sorry, Fest. I'm sorry, brother. Yeah. Um, but I, I would, I, you know. I'm trying was, to get on here. That's why. I asked. Well, come on. You come with us. We got free passes. Come on. <laughs> um, But, no, it's just like it was a, like, the the thing that really made me mad about this whole nightmare thing was, you know, we had the first one, obviously, but then everybody was bitching about, well, there's, we have a big departure from the first one. You only had one movie guys. You only had one. And then after Mark Patton and Kim Myers did their thing, which was honestly second to, to this was amazing. I mean, seriously, Mark Patton, he killed it in two. And yeah. That's what makes me mad about it. It's like, guys, you had two movies. You had one, two, three. What, what, what are you killing? What, do, what do you? It's not like we're nineteen movies in and then you're changing the formula. If anything, three redefine the formula. That's how you should do a horror movie. That's what you need to do. And again, everything was so perfect about it. Um, you know, with you and and just you know Patricia Arquette and the way that had Lane Camp you know, gelled with you guys. I mean, it was, it was incredible. So when I see these cons that have, you know, all these nightmare people, I'm like, I really want to go because they were honestly more influential than a lot of these other ones, you know, Halloween or Friday the 13th. Like, of course, if you get Jamie Lee Curtis, like that's a fucking no brainer. Like she just <laughs> blows everything out of the water. But it's hard to get. 
but seeing like you being in these in these cons it's like yeah i want to go because of how influential the two movies you were in as far as a nightmare franchise goes how amazing it was and you know i just hope you understand and i think you do you know the the impact that you've had i mean again you've had over 100 film tv stage credits i mean you're to me that's a that's a legendary if you can get a hundred god i, I like to get mm, four um <laughs> and you've had a, a hundred so you know again it's just it's 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 insanity with with you know the the whole fan you know fandom of it and and there's another movie that i was going to talk about uh no solicitors <laughs> aka no visitors aka that movie had like 12 names to it um and i watched it and i'm like that said ken sagos is he in? and then you come up as old marvin i'm just sitting there i'm like man he's about to break his foot off and that bitch's ass in a harpy like she's like well, i'm gonna do this i'm like you ain't gonna do shit because he, he he gonna he, he about to take you to the woodshed he gonna whoop your ass and you're just like yeah i'm like and then that was it. I'm like, hey, he was in there for five minutes. I want to see him longer. What? There's a director's cut where he's in there for at least 55, right? No, it was, uh, I think they was just, we was all just trying to help him get his movie done. And, you know, and I, and I like acting. I, I really do like it. So I, you know, I don't, I don't believe, I don't, let me not rephrase this here. I believe there are small roles, but then again, I don't believe there are any small roles because it, it's what how you feel about the role. Mm -hmm. And I felt that I had the time and you don't know where this person is going to be tomorrow. So if you can help that person, you help that person. You give back. You give back. Wow. Did we just go That's full great. circle? I'm pretty sure we went full circle. I think we did. Me. The beginning of this all the way around but i don't want to end it yet because <laughs> because there is a movie that's filming and this, it doesn't even have a date i don't even know if you can talk about it there is a role where you play daris cavassier oh, <laughs> and a friend you, called me up okay <laughs> a friend <laughs> called me up the and best stories said, start like that. When, he when, said, yep. I, I, I don't even know what the movie is about. I know the person. He called me up. He was going to help. I needed some for this kid to pay for his books, and he paid for his books. I have. I don't have that much to say about it, except that I respect the person who's doing it. I respect the me. I respect the fact that your character is named Darius Cavassier. Yeah, a, a, a name that I can't pronounce. So, <laughs> all right, well, let's go. Let's go one step beyond that. Can we yeah. do a TV movie called The Oath Outbreak? Anything on that? <laughs> that was that. That's that's a nice movie. They they you know they were shooting the movie, and it's um. It's supposed to have rival The Walking Dead. That's what it's supposed to have been. Okay. And I like the role that I played because I was an emotional dad that broke down and was crying. And those type of roles I don't always get. And um, the last I heard, it was a year ago, two years ago, they lost some of their money. One of the investors pulled out, and that's where it is. But I like it. I think it's going to be a good project if you can get it back going. But it's supposed to be like a rivalry with The Walking Dead. Now, The Walking Dead is is it still on? It it's it's just wrapped up filming. Uh, what is it? Three weeks ago with their final yeah. season. I mean, but they last eleven seasons. On, I want to be on that so bad. You probably should have been Morgan. I probably would have been like, can 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 Segos be Morgan? Because uh, I like I like that guy that played him, but Kenzie Ghost is better. Ah, I'm a zombie. Hey. Or just let, let let him be Rick Grimes. I would be cool to be a zombie. Can Kenzie Ghost <laughs> be Rick Grimes? Is that too late? 
Um, we you know what? Did... I'm going to write my own horror. I my own horror. I, I want to. I want to direct a horror film. I want to give the respect back. I want to give it back to what gave me the opportunity. Please put that shit on our wall. Please <laughs> put that on our page. We will support that one thousand yeah. percent. Absolutely, we will. Um, but I, you know what? Here. Before we before we close, because we've been going for a while, I don't want to take up too much of your time. It's four forty eight in Los Angeles, California. I'm sure you have bigger things to do than talk to us. You keep saying that. I, I do, I, but I, because you have to. Because that's that's not true. You keep saying bigger things, but I happen to think you guys is a big thing. Uh, this is a huge fucking thing. So we're gonna no, keep going. You got. Oh. You got. You no, got. You. No, that's you, 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 you can guys. point at me. I'm pointing you, you back guys. at you. So I we shoot. This. We shoot. I, shoot. We I, I fucking love this man. <laughs> um, so, oh, let's see. Where are we gonna go now? Where are we gonna you, go? You now? look so cool in your shape. <laughs> I was that, I was gonna my, ask a real generic. That's question. my stick. Sorry. <laughs> ask your my, ask your thing, man. My general question is: um, Is there there something in your career um that you would say that you are the most proud of or you know either a role that you've played or an accomplishment that you've had something you've written that you're really proud of or do you feel like you haven't done your best work yet i don't think i've done my best work yet but Thank i you. think i've Thank done you. some good work I Good work. Jesus. Way, I, to, way, to, way to handicap that. You've done great work. Yeah, I I don't I my greatest accomplishment is that I like to believe that you know, when I first got in this business, there was a lot of people before me took time to talk to me, to encourage me, to instill what respect was, what giving back was. You know, like uh, I always say I met, you know, Alfred Hitchcock, I met Lucille Ball, I met Joan Rivers saved my job. I studied with Ed Cambridge, I studied with Marlon Brando. And all the people that I've named, and it's many, many more, who have given something to me. I never had to pay them anything, but they gave me this valuable, valuable information. And the payment was to move it forward. And I started giving back where I have given these young people a chance. So I think my accomplishment is that I've been a wonderful, strong bridge to build something to pass on and to carry up time. I think that is that that is it for me. What's a what's a what's a better word than wonderful? Magnificent, phenomenal. No, you, I don't uh, think it's I don't think it's any of those. I, I think you know, you, we're all together, we all fingers, we all fingers, but what makes us go forward is we all come together and fist and we knock the bullshit down. And we do what we have to do. And I can tell you, sir, out of anybody we've talked to, anybody that we've we've seen, you have undoubtedly done that. And and it's a fucking it, it is an absolute breath of fresh air um to talk to you. It really is because when we put this interview out, you know, we're gonna send you our video and you can share it how you want, but you know this is a big deal for us because we knew what we were getting into. We knew that um, you were a big deal. And I don't know if, if it, and again, you can, you can sugarcoat it however you want to. We think you're a big fucking deal. I mean, because you know what, what you've done, I mean, just overall what you've done out of, outside of movies. That's the big thing you got to look at is outside of movies, you know, sending kids to camp. Who, who else does that? You know, nobody, I, I, and, and again, I'm not going to shortchange anybody out there, but I know you do what you do. So that's, that's the thing. I, I, I do. 
what I do. You know, I don't, it's what makes me happy. I have the audacity to say, I want to name each one of my heartbeats. <laughs> and when you name your heartbeats, you're beating for a purpose. Man, you stole my fucking words. Don't do that. <laughs> like, man. Well, no. Um, we don't want we don't wanna we don't wanna keep you on any longer than we need to, but just know. Um I really liked you as Carl, and it's always sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I did gonna, too. I, I really thought you were gonna break uh, off in D's ass. There's but... some shit going on here. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. Um I uh, you know what? We um I'm having a really hard time with this because I didn't think it was gonna be that hard, but you know, <laughs> listening to you and talking to you, it's been really like I just want to keep talking for the next three hours because you're a fucking great human being. Like you are an amazing person. And um I know we can't do that. But this is um, this has been special. It really has, and I hope I hope you know that. And I hope we we tried to hit you with some questions that nobody else did. Probably not, because you're a seasoned fucking veteran. You're a grizzled veteran. Um, but we tried. I just had a wonderful time. Um, thank you very much. Wonderful, wonderful time. We had a what, what? See, he keeps pulling out those words. I just want to yeah, go above yeah. that. Magnificent, phenomenal, fabulous. Um, no, Mr. Sagos, please take yeah. this with you if you do. Mm -hmm. um, we're just a little piddly podcast, but we respect the fuck out of everything you mm -hmm. have done, and we will support you in any way that we can with your mm -hmm. endeavors. We whatever we need to do. Um, we we can't thank you enough for 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 being here we really can mm -hmm. um and and you you're a great person you really are let me say this whenever i can come back you have my email just i hate to sound like a singer but cool oh, so so he'll be back next friday <laughs> <laughs> all right now um well let me plug a couple more things uh, before we let him go here um you know, it, Don could go on and on. Um, I mean, we are fans of yours, uh, your work in film, and we are definitely bigger fans of you as a person. And um, I wanted to make sure that people knew where they could find you. Um, so um, if I missed something, please fill in the gaps for me. Um, they can go to www.thesagoscompany.com. Uh, they can go to www.gbc-givingback corporation.com i wrote it down so i wouldn't forget um and of course uh they can find your your gofundme page for your current project the secret weapon yesterday is today yeah the um, gofundme page the gofundme post production gofundme post production all uh, right I'll make a note and um and i assume that you're on some social media outlets i didn't look real close I'm on them, but I'm I, I'm new at this. Okay. I, I, I knew what, what's what's that thing with the pound sign? Twitter, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Twitter and Instagram, yeah. yeah. Okay. If I'm, if I'm you don't work, mind, I'll, I'll throw it out there. I'll be like, a, I don't care. You, I'm gonna work on it. I'm, I'm trying to work on it. I'm I'm trying to come to the 21st century. Well, I tell you what, you did a great job tonight coming to the 21st century, <laughs> and um, <laughs> we uh. Man, we cannot thank you enough. We we can't. We really can't. One more thing. I, I, I've been on this here weight. I've lost 38 pounds. You congratulations. I, I'm gonna tell you if we don't post this, this motherfucker looks amazing. He <laughs> looks fantastic. He yeah. he didn't look bad, but he looks yeah. even more fantastic. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah. You see this motherfucker with his wristband, he's trying to box. Yeah. But you no, know what? There you That's go. Didn't uh, he? guys, <laughs> we fuck. I, man, I, I'm I'm lost for words on this one, and that doesn't happen very often. Um, Ken Sagos, help this motherfucker out. Man. Help him get this movie out. Um, if you don't, I will. So, um, again, thank you, thank you, thank you thank so you. much. I really appreciate it. I swear I do. <laughs> Both of you guys, thank you. 
Absolutely. Thank and you so I'll much, see sir. You later, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, All right. All right, Bye. brother. Thank you. Yeah. All much right. love. Okay.